Now we're ready to install our GroupWise Internet Agent. So I'm going to just verify that my agents are existing and up and running. So RCGRPWise status. So we've got our DVA, our post office and domain, they're up and running. So we'll launch our GroupWise installer. I do have postfix stopped on this les box, so we won't have postfix interfering. And now I want to install additional products. So we select install products. Groupwise Internet Agent. So it's a two-stage installation. First thing we need to do is install the Internet Agent, which does the file copying process. And then the second stage will be to actually configure the Internet Agent for its configuration. So we'll let the file copy happen. It takes a few moments. Once the file copy is complete, we'll select OK. We'll now select Configure Internet Agent. And now we have, again, the wizard that will step us through the installation process. So all of the tasks that we need to accomplish on the left-hand side. And now we select Next to create the GroupWise Internet Agent Object in eDirectory and configure those startup files for that Internet Agent, primarily the GUIA.cfg file. Select Next. Accept the license agreement. Select Next. It's asking for the IP address and the DNS host name of the server where you're installing. So we're going to put that in. So the uh, IP address is 172.17.6.23. MTP port that we want to use in case we want to have multiple MTAs, multiple GUIAs, so we can actually do failovers at 7200 for this particular one. The DNS host name, again, is da-zcm.digitalairlines.com, name of our server. We'll select next. Now it's asking us if we want to send out directly to the internet or through a relay host. We're going to go directly through the internet. So select next. Now ask us for our I domain, our internet mail domain. It's again digitalairlines.com. You do have the choice to enter it from console one if you don't have your domain at this time because it does actually do a test for it. We'll select next. Specify the group-wise domain directory that we're going to communicate and connect to. So again, we're just going to go and find that on our mail directory of our SLC DOM. So we'll select that. Under the SLC DOM WP gate directory, it's going to ask us to create a subdirectory. Uh, what do we want to call it? Default name is GUIA, so that's good for what our purposes are. Now where it's asking us for our LDAP authentication, so where is the LDAP server and credentials to log into it. So we're going to use 172.17.6.23, our server. We're going to use port 389. In order to use port 389, you must have the LDAP group object edited to not require TLS for LDAP communications, which is already done on this server. So my credentials are CN equals admin, comma, O equals DA, and my password is capital N0V3LL123. Uh, if you were going to use port 636 for uh, secure LDAP communications, you'd actually have to specify the SSL certificate to use. Select Next. If it fails authentication, you would receive an error uh, right away. So we know that my authentication has happened. Internet object name, just going to call it GUIA. Where do we want to place the internet object in the eDirectory tree? The default is we want to usually attach it to its parent domain. So we'll just go and navigate to our SLC container and tag it a parent domain of SLC DOM. Select Next. And now it wants to ask us, uh, do we want to launch internet agent on system startup? So that would allow us to modify the gwha.com file so that the grpy script will start all of this, the agents as well. So we'll select exit and at this point we're done with the installation I'm ready to do a test like we did with our agents we'll launch them from the GUI interface first just to make sure they're up and running if we see any errors so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change over to my opt novel groupwise agents bin directory again using uh, tab completion to get there quickly and if I ls, we'll see that we now have our GUIA file is now available to us. And now I'm ready to start up the Internet Agent. All right, so we'll start off dot slash GUIA. We want to see the GUI interface, so dash dash show. And we want to now point to the configuration in the share directory of GUIA.cfg. And we want to use the ampersand as a background process. And we'll select that will notice the branding has changed and our agent is up and running flashing dot flashing star means the agent is processing 
So we'll see uh, configuration. So a couple of things we want to do here before we move on and, and launch it without the interface. We're going to go into our console one and we can make some changes now. If we take a look at our gateways, we've got our GUIA gateway. Again, notice the group wise tab is over on the right hand side. That's one of my little pet peeves. I'd like to move that across to bring that up. So I just did a page options, highlight it and I move it forward to get it as the first page. It does give you notice that you need to close uh, the options page and come back. So we'll just cancel out and then we'll come back to the properties and now we'll notice that we have our group wise page up front. So now if I want a couple things here, take a look at it, we'll notice the database version has been updated and we'll go to our log settings here. We'll switch those to verbose. Um, a couple other things I like to do here is my optional gateway settings is set the HTTP username and passwords for the web consoles. So the same ones that we did with our MTA and POA. And the other thing I can do here is the gateway administrators is go in and we've got our user here and we'll make sure that he's set as the postmaster and we'll apply that. Those changes and we should see the Changes should occur down to the GUIA. We'll see a, a restart in progress happen. It'll shut down and restart. It won't close the windows, but we'll see that change happening. And it'll restart. And the protocols will shut down, and then you'll see everything will restart. And the agent has been now restarted. Let's go back to console one. One last thing I want to do here is we now need to go to groupwise system operations, internet addressing, and we need to set our internet domain. So it does not happen automatically, so I'm going to create an I domain and we do have our digitalairlines.com is our internet domain that we want to use. We're going to select that one. It does become the default one. It's used by our default outbound SLC DOM GUIA. If we look at our addressing formats, addressing format is user ID. Uh, let's change that to first name dot last name. A couple of things we like to do. And we'll see publishing directory is a new feature appeared in GroupWise 8 that allows us to publish either the preferred one or all addresses or specific addresses including nicknames and gateways. We're just going to publish our preferred one here. Select OK. It's going to now ask us to update all of the e-directory internet email addresses for the affected users. We're going to say like yes and we'll see a whole bunch of them scroll by. So now we have our gateway. So let's close the graphical interface of it. And then once that's closed, we'll minimize our console one here. And we'll return to our terminal prompt. And now I could either bring up this one particular agent on its own, or I can stop all agents and use the script to bring them all back. All right, so I want to start off that one particular agent. So I can do the script rcgrpwise. I'm going to say start. And then you just name the agent. So guia.slcdom. That'll bring up only that particular agent since that's the only one that's not started. And we see it as done. I'm just going to clear the screen here and let's do an RCGRPY's status. And we see that now we've got the DVA, the post office, the domain, and the internet agent. So this concludes the internet agent install.